Okay. So the first derivative test was all about trying to figure out when a function's going up or down. And critical numbers were a big part of that because critical numbers separated the sections and critical num Put that away. Yeah, you're not eating lunches and breakfast in here. Critical numbers were where our relative maxes, relative mins are. There's way too many people allergic to foods now that I'm not going to have you eating your meal in here. I know what it is. It wasn't like it was a mysterious food object. I was. <clears throat> oh, I don't care if you're going to pull people around you. It's just not happening. The second derivative. Um, Ava, I'll let you pick who answers first, since you're the new expert. A question I'm going to ask? OK, Elise, do you remember what the second derivative tells us? On a graph, I should say, on a graph. So you look at a picture, and then you're going to say velocity. Like, I don't know. Oh. OK, so velocity was the first derivative, traditionally, of position. I mean, it wasn't a terrible guess, but it, it was off. Yeah. OK, so correct. We have had a lot of graphs that had velocity on it. But the second derivative specifically tells us something when we look at a picture. I know we've talked about it multiple times. You can call on somebody else if you want. That's OK. <laughs> Vivian, do you remember what second derivative looks like on a picture? No, I don't. Oh. Uh, OK, so do you remember what first derivative looks like on a picture? No. Oh, dear. Sure. Here's a pic. No, there's no pictures there. I was wrong. There's pictures. <laughs> I'm not sure why that helps, but. Okay. What does first derivative show you on those pictures? <laughs> I see. I see. Today is going to go well. I'm so glad that we just took a test on the first derivatives. We literally did the first derivative test on our test yesterday. Oh, dear. <clears throat> okay, help him out. Yes. So first derivative will tell you if your graph is going up or down. It tells you the slope. The second derivative tells you basically how fast the slopes are changing, which I know for a lot of people in your brain that doesn't really make sense. But how fast your slopes are changing is telling you which way the graph is curving. So your first derivative is slopes. Second derivative is curvature, the concavity. Um, concavity is the correct word, and I think for whatever reason, a lot of people just understand curvature probably better. But that's what the second derivative tells us. <clears throat> I'll be honest. You really have me worried for today, though. So here's what I would like you to do on that, those two pictures. I would like you to draw the tangent line at each dot on your notes. Uh, okay, my thing's not working great. There we go. It just a short little tangent line is fine. If you make them really long, they'll overlap each other a lot.
I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that your picture looks something like that. Okay. Uh, Vivian and Elise, do you guys want to redeem yourselves here? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you estimate the slope of this first, where my cursor is, so like the very first spot, what's, what's your guess that that slope is? Sure. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to guess what the slope was. Even if there were numbers, it would still be a guess. So I would guess like negative 0.5, negative a half. So negative one would be a little bit steeper, so I'm just kind of like ballparking it. Okay, how about the next spot? I kind of heard something, but I couldn't really hear you. Oh, positive one half, perfect. No. Yeah. yeah, let's go with that. How about this one then? Okay, good. This one's a little bit tougher to tell because it kind of looks almost exactly the same as that one. I'm gonna guess this is slightly higher. I'll just, I'll just round it to that. Okay, now looking at these answers that we wrote, as we go left to right, are the slopes getting bigger or smaller? Okay, perfect. I, I have the fan over here. I can hardly ever hear anything otherwise. Okay, so the slopes are getting bigger. So we would say the slopes are increasing because they are getting bigger. Slopes is a word for f prime of x. So if I didn't want to write slopes, I could say f prime of x is increasing. Come on. So this is literally a, a phrase that's telling you how fast the first derivative is changing. So this is the rate of change of the slopes. And I, I know saying that out loud, it usually is hard to click in your head, but that's what we just drew. The slopes are getting bigger, which tells me the second derivative is positive. If the second derivative is positive, that means the first derivative is getting larger. And as a picture, it's curving up. So it is called concave up, however you want to phrase it. I know we've done this before, but I could tell that you guys need a refresher on it. Now that I spent a really long time on the first picture, I would guess you guys were able to kind of move that over to the second picture and figure out all that information, right? So this one is, looks to me like it's about 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 1, negative 1.5 or something, I don't know. But either way, these answers are all getting smaller as we move to the right, which would mean the derivatives are getting smaller, the slopes are getting smaller, or decreasing. Sometimes using the correct terminology almost makes it like harder to understand, and I, it's just kind of the way it works sometimes. So if the slopes are getting smaller, that would mean the second derivative, which talks about how fast the first derivative changes, would be negative. This would be concave down.
are we feeling okay about this to start with? So in general, first derivative, no, I guess we should talk about all three. What does the original function tell us? The height of the point, yeah. So original function, height of the point. First derivative tells you if it's the points are going up or down, so the rate of change of the points. Second derivative tells you how fast the up and down is changing, which means which way it's curving. And most people won't ever think in their head a curve as whether the slopes are changing or not, but that's what a curve is. Okay, uh, yep, sure. <clears throat> let's, let's just take this equation and kind of figure out stuff. Do uh, you guys want to, no, you kind of already, no, you didn't pick anybody yet, did you guys? Vivian, I don't think you got to pick anybody. You can just give a number or pick somebody. <clears throat> can you guide me on what to do here if we're trying to figure out the concavity? Excellent start. Basically, take the derivatives. Okay, uh, so we've got what? x squared minus 1. Second derivative, 2x. All right, so apparently the concavity changes as this graph moves. So it's not going to always have the same curvature. If you have a parabola, <clears throat> When you get to the second derivative of a parabola, it just has a regular number. And that's because a parabola has a solid curvature throughout the entire shape. That's what a regular number would mean, a constant. Changing concavity means it's going to change curvatures at some point. OK, Ava, how do we find possible inflection points even though you have no idea what they are yet? Excellent job. Now, possible inflection points, we affectionately are going to refer to them as PIPs, partially just because it's kind of a fun acronym to say. Possible inflection point. So instead of um, critical numbers, we're just going to refer to the ones in the second derivative as PIPs. So equal to 0 or undefined. Well, equal to 0 would happen at x equals 0. So we have a pip at x equals 0. And we'll get to inflection points. I'm just, I find it easier to explain how to find information first. OK, so we're going to do this identical to the first derivative test. What happened there? You're going to have a number line, and on that number line, you're going to put your pips. So everything before this pip is going to have a certain concavity. Everything after this pip is going to have also a like concavity, and we will have to test for them just like the first derivative test. So my test number, I don't know, whatever I want, negative 1, negative 10, let's test negative 1. Where am I going to test it into then? Where does the second derivative test test? Second derivative. So I'm going to take my test number and put it in the second derivative, and I just care if it's positive or negative, just like first derivative test. This one will give me a negative answer. That means to the left of 0, we'll have a negative concavity. Concave down. And just like first derivative test, when we first start making these, we're going to put a lot more information, you know, when we're first doing it because you're not so familiar with it. I'm going to guess after a while, a lot of you just started putting the plus and minus signs on your 
on your number lines rather than actually like writing out a bunch of stuff because you're used to what it stands for. So let's see, test, probably just positive one. And that's going to give me a positive answer. So to the right of zero will be concave up, positive concavity. <clears throat> now the actual in question was what? Find the open intervals where it's concave up or down. Well, we just did that. Oh, we didn't write the intervals on there, though, did we? So it is concave down from negative infinity to zero. It is concave up from zero. I wonder if I have to restart my computer or something. Zero to infinity. Okay, we didn't really talk about inflection points yet. Um, we did talk about second derivative as curvature. Ava, one more time as the expert. When do inflection points happen? Okay, so second derivative is zero or undefined. What would a curvature of zero look like for anybody? So no curvature would look like like a flat line, a straight line. Okay, so according to this chart, our graph is curving downward, curving downward, curving downward, not curving at all, curving upward, curving upward, curving upward. Do you want me to draw what that kind of looks like? Can you picture it in your head? Curving downwards, curving downwards, not curving, curving upwards. So we've drawn x cubed like a million times without really thinking about it probably. An inflection point, is it written somewhere on this page? Nope. Was it written on the previous page? I didn't see it, but maybe I skipped it. Was it? Oh, good. That's what I thought. It's telling you to find the point of inflection on this problem, but I didn't think we even went and talked about it. A point of inflection. Can anybody figure out what it is from the picture, possibly? Close. It's close. So an inflection point. And if it's on the next page, you can just highlight it there. I don't care. I don't like pre-printed notes, so I don't really use them. I only like using these notes for the problems that are written down. An inflection point is when your function changes curvature. Now, it does unlike a relative max and relative min. Relative max and relative min differentiate increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So they're separate. An inflection point doesn't care if it goes from curving down to curving up or if it goes from curving up to curving down. An inflection point is only when it changes concavity. So pips are possible places that your graph could change concavity. That's why they're called possible inflection points. What time are we done today? Uh, 15? Oh, yeah, we got time. Go for it. Say it again. Yep. Oh, so you know how um, critical values 
don't have to be maxes or mins. They happen, every critical value has to happen, oh, let me say that, every max or min has to happen at a critical value. But sometimes your graph goes down and then goes down again, so it's not a max or min. It was just like a possible place where it could happen. So sometimes we're gonna get locations where it doesn't change concavity, even though like it might go from negative to negative, depending on the weird graph. So it won't always be an inflection point, but it has to happen at the possible places. Kind of what you're asking for? Okay, here's the annoying thing about inflection points. They cannot be X values, right? It, so even in the name of it, they call it an inflection point. So you're always supposed to find the actual point and part of the reason they do that is because sometimes uh, vertical asymptotes or like strange places happen that kind of look like it should be an inflection point, but it's not an actual number, like not a point. So they always have you look for the point. We know it happens at x equals zero because that's what our pip told us. So we need to find the y value that happens at zero, um, which which equation do I plug it in to get the height of the point? The original function. So one third x cubed minus x would be also zero. So our inflection point happens at zero, zero. Okay, I wanted to go extremely slow on this one problem just to show you that second derivative test is identical to the first derivative test, but everything has a different name. That's pretty much it. So even if you don't know what anything is called, I would bet you could go through and find all of the answers and information. I don't know, is there something I didn't talk about good enough or doesn't seem to make sense yet or I don't know, whatever you want. I will tell you that sometimes I will accidentally call these flex points instead of inflection points because every single teacher I had called them flex points until I graduated and became a teacher and then saw that they're actually called inflection points. Uh, and AP always calls them inflection points. So I sometimes just out of habit will call them flex points. Just know that that's the same thing. Okay, let's move on then. On those pictures, why don't you guys draw a point where you think an inflection point happens? It, sometimes it takes some training to get used to knowing where an inflection point happens at. UK, are you eating? Because I just yelled at Noah for eating. Uh, Ellen, pick three people. Three people. Those three people should come up and draw the inflection point on the picture. Was this too much responsibility? So just pick three numbers then. Oh, I'm hearing some like evil, evil intentions. Did you just pick that whole table? That was actually a pretty good idea. Didn't even think of that. No, you don't have to run. We should stay at page. I mean, you can if you want, but no, you don't need to. Okay, good. Excellent. <clears throat> so I would possibly move this a little more. I'll just blame the smart board. So an inflection point will happen exactly in the middle of where it's changed. Like, you usually can't see the flat spot, but I can tell that it's curving up to the left. I can tell that it's curving down to the right. And so that definitely tells me that the inflection point is right in the middle. 
And the more inflection points you look at, the better you'll be at just like zeroing right in on where it is. It's not extremely easy to spot like a max or a min. OK. Um, I guess I should ask about these four pictures. I mean, they're already drawn. It's not like we need to do anything. Does anybody want me to explain how come the ones on the right don't have an inflection point, but the ones on the left do? So the, the definition I said for an inflection point is when your function changes concavity and when it's an actual point, OK? So the top left, obviously, is very clear, like we just did a million of those. That's the ones you'll see all the time. This one happens far less common. But nonetheless, it was this is curving down. This is, I love how I'm saying this backwards. This is curving up. This is curving down. If any part of your picture looks like a U. It is curving up. When I'm looking at this one right here, this is the left-hand side of a U. If any part of your picture is an upside-down U, that is curving down. And if you look at this, this is the left-hand side of a downwards U. That's, that's how my brain interprets whether it's curving up or curving down. Everybody will probably have a slightly different method. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you're able to identify them. This one, curving up, curving up. So it didn't change concavity. This one does change concavity, but there's no actual point. So it can't be an inflection point. What, uh, <clears throat> number one, you're not supposed to be sitting there. And you guys keep messing around. Let's stop. And if your reasoning is she told me to, I don't think that one will hold up in anywhere. Yeah, yeah. If, you're, if your reasoning is she told me to, yeah, you don't have to actually do it. Like, you have choices on your own. You have your own free will. Um, yes, so if she told you to, it's not difficult to be like, no. Mm, maybe try harder. Here's what I would like you guys to do. Take a couple minutes to try. I realize the hypocrisy of me just literally telling you something to do something. Um, we'll ignore that. I would like you to do the first derivative test on f prime of x. I would like you to do the second derivative test on f double prime of x. So you will have two charts, number lines, whatever you want to call them, on the right-hand side. One for the first derivative, one for the second derivative. Your first derivative chart will tell you everything about increasing, decreasing, relative max, relative min. Your second degree chart, second degree, second derivative chart will be all about which way it is curving and if it has an inflection point. So basically, we should be able to find out everything and anything about functions. <coughs>
Bless you. Didn't realize how quiet it was in here until that happened. Okay, I think I got those right. Kind of did them all in my head, but uh, did you guys get the same thing? Or I should ask if anybody got the same thing? Did you get it go down, down, up? Okay, good. And then I got it curving up, curving down, curving up. So we have a relative min and two inflection points. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody looked ahead in the packet. Can you guys figure out where this is headed? Uh, no, that's no, not a bad thought. Uh, I we are going to be drawing accurate graphs of functions without needing a calculator because we are able to figure out pretty much everything about the function where it's going up, down, curving, everything. We know individual points, so we can use those individual points to make a pretty accurate graph. That's what section six is. It's quite slow. I mean, right, we just had this one problem and your goal was to do first derivative test, second derivative test, find out everything, and that took us roughly 10-ish minutes, and that was on an easy <coughs> equation. So you start getting like a rational, you start getting a, a radical, like a root equation. They go a lot slower. Um, so it's not necessarily a super easy topic to test on because I have to try to figure out questions. If you get something wrong in the very beginning of this problem, the entire thing is wrong. And so I have to try to come up with the questions so that I'm only testing you on specific parts because otherwise you could absolutely destroy your grade, you know? Like if you just made a minor mistake at the beginning, it screws up the whole thing. So uh, the test will be very slow on this. It's horrible for me to grade. Um, kind of like the one you guys took yesterday because there's lots of ways to solve things and your answers can look drastically different even though they might be correct. So. Okay, I'll stop here because uh, you guys did pretty good. So part of the reason I spent forever on first derivative test was because I knew this was coming and I wanted you to be able to handle this pretty easily once we got there.